Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Martin Sellers, the Dean of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences here at Lincoln Memorial University. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm honored today to have with me uh, Assistant Professor of Theater, Dr. Joseph Gill. And uh, Dr. Gill, how are you today? I'm doing very fine. I'm I appreciate you. Well. I appreciate you being here, taking time out from your very, very busy schedule. Uh, to start off with, and we want to talk about theater, by the way, obviously, because that's the expertise that you uh, are so handedly able and capable of. Uh, but before we go there, tell us a bit about your background, where you're from, some of your education, uh, your big white dog, whatever you want to talk about. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, just about myself. I was born in, in Queens, New York. Uh, straight parents, though. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then uh, about when I was 19, I moved out to California. Gotcha. And it was more of my drive always to move, to do movies. I was never fit in in New York because I was this blonde-haired kid, surfer dude, in the middle of Queens where everybody was leather jackets and, you know, Vinnie Bob Barinos, you know. So mm -hmm. when I moved to California, I, I got into the acting but I started doing a little commercials some modeling back then, but yeah. was never really trained as well until I started taking some theater courses. Gotcha. And I never went to university until later on. I went to university when I was about 30-something years old, 33 years old, okay. is when I decided to get my first BA. Excellent. And then I, from there I went into master's, then I got an MFA, and then... From there, that was my journey of teaching. And I moved from California to Denver, Colorado. I was teaching in Boulder and Denver for a bit. Yeah. And then I found my way in Harrogate, Tennessee. And has theater always been uh, something you wanted to do? Or yes, for me, it's, the only, it's my only language I can do. I, um, people don't believe me, but I am on the spectrum. Okay. So, and being on the spectrum of the, uh, I have to learn to communicate in a different way. And I was always that different kid. And I had my own little quirks, my own little ways of doing things. And I always loved to entertain. So that was my thing. And that was in, innately. It was about me entertaining, making people happy, and being around people. And you, know. and you, you entertain quite well. I've been <laughs> in your class. I peer reviewed one of your classes. Remember a couple of years ago? I do. And I was completely enthralled. I just left the class. I wanted to be an actor after that That's one class. Good. It's amazing. And that was speech, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you, tell us about your dog, because I, okay. I see him in the back of your car, and I... So my dog is my Zen master. He is this, a great Pyrenees. He's about 115 pounds. He looks a little heavier like me. I'm really only 130, but I look a lot heavier. But, it's the camera. Uh, it's the camera, definitely. And the blue light we couldn't get right back here. So it was um, Yankees. Uh, he's eight years old. I found him in Denver. He was on the street corner. Somebody was hawking him. And, for, and, and my friend said, why don't you get a dog? And I said, no way in heck. I have no place for a dog. Next week, I had a dog. And we found him, we named him Yankee, because I'm a big Yankee, New York Yankee fan. I love baseball, uh -huh. which brings me back to theater. It's the same thing as that entertainment part of uh, being in an audience, being a fan, in the, mm -hmm. and the baseball being the show. So, but Yankee's a great dog. When I mean he's zen, he really calms me down. Yeah. He's a big guy, so he doesn't need to do that much. Yeah. And he's taught me to just be, so I don't need to be that little extra. That's nice. Which yeah. people think I ain't, huh? No, <laughs> that's, I didn't know which cam was on. No, it's <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Same. We're all on. But, you know, speaking of, speaking of theater, <laughs> uh, tell us about the theater program at LMU. Well, you have a, we have a minor in theater at LMU, and here we teach about, I would say, five courses that we teach throughout the, a time, usually about, a, you can get it within a two-year period. We have uh, intro to theater, which is really the basic of doing a gamut of what theater is. From We learn about the history of theater, um, playwriting, directing, acting, and towards the end of the semester, the students have have formed a little group, usually an average of five students. They've written a play, and they have to produce it. So uh, at this point in the semester right now, that's what the students are getting ready to perform their live play, although we have just been cut off after Thanksgiving. So they'll be doing a new version of a live play. They will still do it live, but Can you, you know. do it Zoom? Or does We're it doing it via Zoom, and they've, uh, really? with the tactics of Zoom, yeah. will be, they have to find their own backgrounds. So they that's have it. to make a background. Yeah. They'll be doing it with each other, and I'll be filming it, and then we'll showcase it on the day well, of the so, final. You know, some of the students will be on uh, on satellite, so there'll be there'll be a time warp. So when somebody says to them, "How are you?" you'll hear like a delay. Sometimes I'm okay. It depends. It, it depends. That only happens if somebody has very low frequency. Yeah. If their Wi-Fi is really low or, or going out. If they're uh, that very rarely happens right. is the yeah. the cut. Well, only again if, if it is if they're in a bad. Yeah. area that their Wi-Fi is not yeah. too strong. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky in, speed, in Speedwell. When the vice president calls me up and wants to talk to me by Zoom, I 
immediately have <laughs> delays, so you can't. <laughs> let, let me ask you, uh, regarding, regarding that class, that theater class, do you draw students from it to the plays that you uh, produce? Yes. How, do, how does that happen? How do you get students interested? Well, I think a lot of people take the class because they said, oh my God, it's Joe Gill's class in Easy A. So they'll go to the class and they'll say, what can I get? And then when they get into it, they realize they can have a little bit more fun because I really like to put the play in theater. And so when they realize it could be a little fun, it's not that bad, they start working. And then as I make them, for me, it's so important as a director, period. And I, I teach how I direct. And I like to make my ensemble together. So as the group, they'll be an ensemble to work together, so they want to work for each other. Gotcha. I had some, and, and a lot of people said, oh, you have a lot of some of the misfits or whatever. Some of the misfits come up with the best writing, the yeah. best work that I get because uh, they've been, in, I guess, in, in, in it's excited. Teamwork, by, think, and and it's that, and they want to do it for others, and then they like to compete, and then they yeah. realize, oh, I can have fun at this, and there's no wrong, really. Unless, yeah. you know, I, again, I, I do say I don't like any violence or harm, yeah. But again, other than that, well, the rest of it's no... It's, it's, it it's, amazes yeah. me because I've had some of the students in your play, in plays, in my classes, and so I, I can recall a couple of them who were really quiet, <laughs> and then I see them on stage, and I almost fall off my chair, and then after the play's over, they're back to being quiet. So somehow you're able to bring out... How do you bring out the best in a, in a young person who's not been in a play before? How do you do that? I... I, I there is no secret to this, and all I know is that there is no uh, also special potion either. It's, I'll see something and I'll try to, again, it's always uh, cultivating like a flower. How do you make a flower grow? How do you make it better? There's little things to do. I'm going to nurture it first, and I'm going to make sure it has the right food around it. And then I'm going to water it and, and try to see, and it's going to do its natural thing. Each and every person on this campus has their bright and their light to shine. It's just my job to make sure I know how to reflect everything to make their shine work the best. Yeah. Again, you know, so, and that works, and everybody does have that stuff in them, so. In, in, in theater, uh, in the plays that you've done, and um, <clears throat> I know this last, this last uh, theater play that you put on was affected or infected by COVID and so on. Um, but before I get to that, from the point of view of an instructor, right, how do you decide... Let's go before COVID. How do you decide what play might be best? Do you, do you think of the actors first, or do you think of the play? Uh, so it's that? a mixture. It's a, mm -hmm. a, a dual part. I think of, again, because play theater in itself needs to be live, and it needs to have a script, yeah. and it also needs to have an audience. Mm -hmm. So if any of those three are missing, it's not theater. Okay. It, and so I have to make sure I, I want to see who I have that's available as acting pool that I could say that would want to participate yeah. then I got to see what might the audience in the area who might come see it mm -hmm. again I'm not going to do some bloody pornographic film here type of because it would offend a lot of people sure. here yeah. so I'm going to find a play that reaches touches more of the people here from their heart mm -hmm. so that's how I'll look for that then I'll look what will excite the actors here yeah. and give them a little bit more of a role if the actor is a natural comedian I might want them playing some dramatic role mm -hmm. somebody who's good at drama I say okay we're going to try and make you a comedian, so I try and do it that way, and then that's what makes it interesting for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I appreciated the uh, <clears throat> the play that you did. It was a, kind of a radio play, uh, arsenic and old lace, which I, you know, I had forgotten about that. It's an older time, but I, from from a while back. I had asked my wife. I said, "Do you know anything about this play?" And she put away the arsenic jar real quick and then <laughs> gave me the wine instead. But um, it was a wonderful rendition, and what it was so in interesting to me, and I'd like you to speak about this is that the students utilized microphones, it was recorded, they spoke, they did their lines, but it, it, was, no, it was no furnishings, it was no play abstractions like you would normally see in, in the marketing of a regular play. How did you come to that process of being able to have people listening and watching and be able to use their imagination? I think that was wonderful. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, I like to direct on a sort of Dharma situation, which is directing with what I have mm -hmm. and work with the nature of the natural thing that comes in. So, first of all, I had an early deadline because originally we were going to do a play that we'd been rehearsing in spring. Yeah. I already had a cast. We already did some rehearsing. So I figured, oh, we can do this in October, mm -hmm. early October. We'll get it done. Then I realized, whoops, that was canceled. We can't do a, that performance because we weren't allowed to. We had to go with COVID rules, which means keeping six feet, keeping masks on. And the play that I was going to do in the spring was very much physical comedy. And matter of fact, one whole entire scene 
if not the whole entire act, is all almost physical. tableaus and physical acting. So, uh, so then I said, let me try a radio play, because what else can we do that's something we could hear, they could record, and, and uh, Dr. G and Dr. Vogel both work with audio in uh, media communications, and we thought, hey, maybe we can mix this up. And they helped me out a lot with helping out with the mics and, and working that stuff. So, too, and it was, it was the gift of the students. Everything was there. Everything was there. You know, and it was as perfect as I can make it. You know, I, I look at that as that's what's perfect. It, yeah, there was some problems here and there. Nothing was great, but in that sense, I loved it and it worked out well. Some of the, some of the students that I, I noticed in the play, uh, well, all the students were good. I mean, every student was good. Uh, and I noticed a couple of them, again, like that I've had in my classes. Uh, I was just so impressed. Do you find, what do you do with a student that you find is, you say to yourself, oh my God, this student is terrific. Do you do anything? Can they go on from here? What, what's the next step for somebody? Yeah. I mean, maybe, she, maybe he or she's a math major. I mean, do, do you try to convince them, well, hey, you know, you ought to take this up. And what do you, th what do, you do about that? Well, I, again, I, I don't see why I was always one, but we can do both. Okay. It doesn't mean one or the other, and just you can focus in. But uh, again, if somebody wanted to be acting, I, I guide them towards the direction of what they want to do. Would if it be they want like to, a master's degree in another college? There would be another or? master's degree, or even tell them to even try to get into uh, other classes outside of school that doesn't have to be even university school. Or e again, or even try to make their own troupe, their own improvisation. Again, it's about practice, yeah. acting yeah. And, and even speaking. Like you yeah. read aloud to your wife. Yeah, I do. That in itself yeah. is speaking. Yeah. So that you, when you do some political talking as a faculty and as a teacher here, yeah. you're able to be heard. And I ask all my actors, read every day aloud. Read the newspaper. Read the cereal box. Yeah. Keep on working on your articulation. How does that help them? Does that help them hear themselves? Well, it's or? again, it's another form. Actors have, what, three tools, which is what, the body, which is our physical nature, our voice, yeah. and our mind. Yeah. All of them have to be crisp and all of them have to work well together. Yeah. If we're still mumbling like this, nobody's gonna understand us. Yeah. If I'm just standing here like a talking head, yeah. Yeah. it gets even scarier. When I read to my wife, sometimes I leave my, my mind in, in another place, but that's another story. Yeah. It's easier to read to her than it is to actually explain it all, but she gets it. She gets the plot quicker than I do. I mean, I'm like- But it also makes you, a, 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 you're engaged into yeah. it. And then yeah. it's a, pra again, it's a practice. And it's yeah. one of those things, like uh, somebody, uh, an athlete, if somebody was a cheerleader, every day they have to do their tumbles. Yeah. Every day they have to do the stretches. So they get that down, and, and that's what I meant by practice. It's a rehearsal. Yeah, it is. You know. Well, tell me this, if you could, uh, if you could from ground up, <clears throat> You know I was going to ask you this question. No. From no, ground up. Mean, from ground up? <laughs> from oh, ground, oh, yes. Oh, from ground up. Oh, I like this question. <laughs> ground it up. Oh. <laughs> if you could build a, uh, a theater uh, or a theater and a theater right. major, just carte blanche, you know, no money worried about or anything, what, what would you do in a perfect world? In a perfect world, um, there was this, in my dream world, so I'm going to say my, because my dream is perfect. Uh, in the gap, there's this land that was open. And I always wanted to build a, uh, a black box theater, which is the theater that can change. It has lights all above, mm -hmm. and the situation, the seating areas could change. Mm -hmm. I'd have a place like that. Mm -hmm. Then once we had the space, the setting, the groundwork, yeah. then I'd love, if we were able to do a full-on production, we'd, I'd make a list of, we'd have acting programs here. We'd have some directing programs, mm -hmm. as well as some set building programs and some lighting, and set involve them all. Right. Because that's what theater is, is yeah. literally all the arts mm -hmm put together and then displayed, produced live. Do, uh, do actors, uh, when, when they're coming up, uh, either through a college program or a summer stock or something like that, do they, it, would you encourage an actor to learn all the parts of a theater before they get more physically involved in the acting part or is that not important? I think it's, it, it's for a community and respectful, I like to learn everything. I got to learn a bunch of all the parts of it. It helped me then understand then who understand the director, understand the person who's dressing me, mm -hmm. understand where the lights are so I can respect that person because they're gonna make sure I'm lit. Because yeah. if I'm not lit, I'm gonna look terrible. What if you're half lit? And oh. if I'm half lit, and I am a half lit, <laughs> no, uh, if, 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 gurgle, 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 no. Um, yeah, no, no but. <laughs> I, I, appreciate, I appreciate your, your candor about that. Theater is such a complicated process, yeah. but you make it so easy and you make it uh, a dream come true for a lot of our students. I want to thank you for being on this program. Mm -hmm. The students appreciate you. Uh, I applaud you, and I appreciate you being my friend. Uh, thank you, Joe Gill. And thank also the students here at LMU, as well as my fellow faculty and my advisors and stuff. You guys are wonderful, and that's what makes this world wonderful. Community, you are my community. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Music playing out. Da, da, da.